It's time now for Voices of the Region. Each week we hear from a journalist covering stories of interest in the Northland. This week our reporter is Aaron Brown, an author, columnist, and instructor at Hibbing Community College. We're going to see a series of very competitive elections on the Iron Range. In fact, I wouldn't even be sort of, you know, underselling it to say that the control of the Minnesota House and Senate might rest on the outcome of some Senate races and House races just right here in the Arrowhead region in northeastern Minnesota. So that's a very exciting detail for political watchers. Um, there are a lot of policy implications, uh, big picture policy implications. And, uh, and a kind of a cultural vibe, I think, at, at, on the line here, uh, there, a lot at stake. And so one of the big dominoes to fall was uh, State Senator Tom Bach, former minority leader, former majority leader, uh, former DFLer, now an independent caucusing with the Republicans. Uh, he, he announced, um, perhaps surprisingly to some, um, not to others, he was going to retire and, and uh, leave his seat, his new district uh, seat open. And that's, uh, of course, significant for a lot of reasons. Senator Bach had among the highest amounts of seniority in the range delegation. He had uh, been either a chair or a caucus leader, which is, a, which is a high ranking position in state politics for a long time. And now uh, he will be replaced by a new senator of one party or the other. That's also reflective of the district being split between a very big geographic area, the, the more rural wooded part of Northeastern Minnesota, stretching from Cook County all the way to Lake of the Woods and all the way down through the wet, uh, Eastern Mesabi Iron Range. And then uh, that's the 3A side. And then the 3B side is, is Hermantown Proctor and uh, what you might call the Duluth Exurbs. And uh, so that's, those are two very different house districts uh, merged into one big Senate district that will be one of the pivotal Senate races of the whole state. Growing up, and you know, this is true of a lot of people, perhaps who grew up uh, on the range and in rural places and places where there weren't a lot of money, uh, your mom made your clothes. My mom made my school clothes when I was a kid and my sister's clothes. And uh, that wasn't terribly uncommon. But uh, analysis of product costs and prices now, we talk about inflation a lot in the news these days. Um, it shows that it's actually not cheaper to make your own clothing from scratch uh, than, than it is to buy the cheap clothing that comes usually from overseas and usually from people who don't make a lot of money, who make less than poverty wages here. Um, um, and so this is a question that we have was we talk about prices a lot because we notice paying more for the products we use every day. But I don't know that we have a really good, as a society, relationship with the value of the things that we use every day, the value in terms of what they cost to make and the work that goes into making them. Um, one of the challenges, I think, especially in, a, in an advanced democracy, an advanced uh, capitalist industry like, like the United States, you want to uh, figure out how we're going to be self-sustaining into the future. And right now we have a population where not only do not, a lot of people not know how to sew clothing, I, I'm one of them, to be honest, um, but even if we wanted to learn, um, the, the, the fact that it's more expensive is actually a deterrent to learning how to fix your own cars, how to fix your own, uh, how to make your own clothing. And so that's something that we need to think about. What are the, what, not only what the cost of what we're paying for things like gas and, and what we pay at the grocery store, but also the, the value and also the, you know, the value and, and cultural value of being able to produce our own things. I am here at Hibbing Community College in my office, and uh, in a few months, I will be at the Hibbing campus of Minnesota North College. So five colleges, Hibbing, Misabi Range, Rainy River, Vermilion, and Itasca are all merging and uh, Misabi Range has two campuses. So we're actually going to have six campus locations uh, for Minnesota North College spread throughout Northeastern Minnesota. Um, the, 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 short, you know, the short reassurance we can give everybody is that all the campuses are gonna remain open 
and will function much as they have before. And the programs and courses and instructors and, and support staff that you've come to know in your local community will remain available. Uh, but the merger does open up new opportunities, and uh, obviously it produces a situation where we're more financially resilient. That's one of the reasons it happened. But, but also it's um, going to allow students to register on multiple campuses if they so choose. Uh, it allows students to change, change directions and, and without having to transfer or go through complex bureaucracy. Um, they can switch from one campus to another if they want to try a different program. It's got a lot of flexibility for the student. Mm -hmm.